Welcome guys, stoked to be back with you for another live stream. <clears throat> we are on the 1st of Feb of 2024, crazy to think that the first month of this new year that basically just started is gone already. So I hope your Jan has been off to a good start and your year has been off to a good start. And uh, one way that we can help you make that better is to go ahead and, and show you some cool things that you can use to improve your worship guitar skills and your playing in general. So um, as we get started here and getting settled, we'll do a quick sound check. Please let me know where in the world you are tuning in from. And um, if you have any questions, just start your question with the letter Q followed by a colon. That way I can spot them nice and easy in the comment section and then go ahead and answer those for you guys today. So um, while we are getting settled here, let me know where you're tuning in from. We see uh, Charlie Gomez. Hey, Charlie, great to have you um, join us today. My daughter's name is Charlie, so um, that's a, a great name. Welcome, welcome. Great to have you. Um, Charlie is one of our longtime um, subscribers, um, and we've got Nix saying, hey, hey, Nix, great to see you. Um, we're always uh, surprised and, and really great to see everybody from all areas of the world. We've got Samson tuning in from Nigeria. Hey, Samson, great to see you. Um, so as we get settled there, leave me some comments. Let me know where you're watching from. And then we're going to do a quick sound check. I'm just going to play a little bit of a backing track. And um, we're going to test the guitar sound. And then we've got a second angle that we are trying out here today. Um, that we're going to be uh, giving you a different view on the guitar. So that's a little bit more of the view of the guitar. So hopefully you can see all of that stuff nice and clear. So uh, let's quickly do a tuning over there. And then we're going to see what our tracks is sounding like. Right, let me know if you guys heard all of that nice and loud and clear. We had the track playing there and some guitar. Uh, we want to make sure our levels are good before we dive into the lessons. So Nick is tuning in from Russia. Great to see you, Nick. Um, and we've got Tony Rowe tuning in from New York City. Uh, never been there. Love to visit at some point. Uh, Kenan is tuning in from J Bay, South Africa, a few rooms down. Uh, from where I'm at at the moment, and then Auntie from Finland. Hey, Auntie, great to see you. Thanks for all the feedback you sent us. Uh, that's great. And then uh, Ken and the know that the track can come up a little bit. So then we're going to be A for away with where we're at um, for today's lesson. So Samson is saying great, loud and clear. And then Brian Belashopka, both Brian and Auntie are members of our Witch Guitar Skills Academy. Brian tuning in from Indiana, USA. Great to see you with us again, yeah, Brian. So um, today our focus is all on using some repetition, syncopation, and articulation in your playing to get some parts that can stand out. And uh, we're kind of continuing our discussion from last week, which is not so much about what you play, but how you play it. And we know that that's the case when you are communicating with someone. If you're married, You've probably heard this from your spouse. It's not what we say that gets us into trouble. It is how we say it, right? So um, it's the same with the guitar. It's not so much um, important about the notes that we play because let's face it, for the most part, it's triads and simple chord progressions. And yes, you can do a bunch of stuff, but it's more about how you play those few notes that's going to make the difference. And you know, the, the, a lot of folks give worship music um, the one criticism of it is it's only four chords and it's the same um, progressions and all that kind of stuff. Well, I understand where they are coming from uh, because there's obviously a lot of different styles of music and different um, levels and intensity of harmony and melody and, and groove and all that kind of stuff. But if you look at the blues, that's only three chords, A7, D7, E7, and uh, how much have the guys been able to do in blues guitar 
we have three chords and five notes. Well, let's make it six notes if you do the blues scale instead of the pentatonic. So there's so much that you can do with less notes, but having more availability and more ability in terms of how you are going to be playing those notes. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. And um, Tony Rowe is saying, why PRS over other guitars? Um, this guitar I bought secondhand in 2002, I think. So I've had it for over 20 years. Um, <clears throat> so this is just my personal preference. Um, I think it's a great quality guitars. They built super well. I, um, I got it for a really good price. I uh, bought it secondhand. The things that I like about it is um, it's, it's, it's got the, this fixed bridge over here. So I like that for, for tuning's sake. Um, I, like, I like that. Um, it's got high output pickups. So obviously I've got these, um, I think these are Dragon humbucker pickups. And then I also have the coil tap on my guitar here where I can turn any of the um, <clears throat> pickups into a single coil pickup. So I like that. And then this guitar also, has, if you can see over here, is what we call a wide fat neck. Let's see if I go to this angle here. Um, so it's, it's a nice, it's a bulky neck that I like. So um, I like the, the sturdiness of the guitar. And then in terms of just ice, I tend to do well with um, how I connect with the guitar in terms of the tuning, how, how it feels and all of those kind of stuff. And of course, how it sounds as well. So that's just been my preference. And obviously I've, I've had this guitar now for 20 plus years. Um, so I've gotten to know it really well over time. I'll definitely invest in a, a few more PRSs down the road. Um, for those of you who might not know my story, I used to be a professional musician, uh, toured all over the world, and then uh, life kind of took a different direction when I realized I also want to have a happy family. I don't want to be on a road 24 seven. Of course, I miss music and all that, but um, I, I made a different direction. So therefore, I didn't continue investing in a bunch of new guitars. So I've got a few others. I've got a Strat, I've got a Music Man, um, for the electric guitars and then um, some acoustics. But when I play with a Strat and the Music Man, they offer different tones and different sounds and different feels. So this has just been my preference. I know that there are some guys that play PRSs uh, in the worship genre, but I mean, the PRS is, is well known. A lot of guys play blues with it. Obviously, in the early 2000s, there were a lot of new metal bands that played PRSs as well. Everything from Creed to Linkin Park, but then obviously you get people like Santana and you get um, a wide range of styles that can come out of it. And now with the, the Silver Sky, which is one that I'd like to try as well. But yeah, uh, that's my answer to you, Tony. It's just personal preference. And it's a guitar that I'm comfortable with. And I like how it sounds and how it feels. And um, so that is kind of the, um, the thinking behind it. I don't really think there's such a thing as the world's best guitar player or the world's best guitar, or the best amp, or the best pedal. It's all about preference and what you prefer um, in terms of sound and feel and quality and all that kind of stuff. Any more questions, uh, they're welcome to, to go in the comments box. So with all that said, when you have your gear, you want to be able to obviously get a good sound out of it. So right now I've just got my, my PRS and it's plugged into my Kemper over here. And... I've got this typical sound I always use. We've got a video on our YouTube channel where I've broken that tone down. And a big part of this sound is this. Um, a lot of delay in this instance. And if I go to my other camera. But when I play stuff like this. Um, The, um, the sound works really well in terms of the other delays play with each other. Now, what I wanted to show you today as part of our thought experiment, we did a video on this that we published earlier in the week, and I'll quickly do um, a jam of the, the parts over a backing track. And what I want you to focus on is let's just imagine, instead of all my notes, I should actually count this, and what, what's 22 times 6? So 22 times 6 is 132, um, that's how the math shakes out with that. Now that's 132 notes that I can play on my guitar. At any given moment, I can 
choose to play these. I can go all the way up and down the neck, but I've got six strings, 22 frets, 132 notes. But what if I say to you, listen, we want to learn how to do more with less. Less is more is always a good idea. Um, I've heard it say that perfection is not when you can't put anything else, or you can't add anything else to it. Instead, perfection is what you have when you can't take anything else away. So if I had to say to you, listen, let's just go ahead and we're going to take three notes only. You are only allowed to use three notes. But not three notes per chord, three notes per progression. So I'm going to have four different chords. They're going to play in a track, but I'm only going to be able to play three notes. And my three notes are going to be these three. So... What can I do if I'm only allowed to play these three notes? Well, let's see what I can do with that. I'm going to also move it up the neck. Then I'm going to say, okay, cool. Well, let's add a fourth note. So what can I do if I can only play those four notes? And then what can I do if I can only play these four notes? And then we'll, um, we'll, we'll kind of stop there. But um, I'll, exp I'll explain the, the concept. So I'm going to tap myself in here. And then um, let's have Entry. a listen. Two, three, four. So let's listen there. F sharp minor, A, and E. Now I only have those three notes, right? Even higher. So I'm just going to stop it there for now. Can you see that? Obviously, that was just an idea that you can use in a live worship setting. But that idea sounded much better than it would have been if I tried to play all the different notes I can. And I'm not really saying anything with a lot of words. Have any of you ever listened to somebody speak? They, they say a lot of words, but they're not communicating much. Well, unfortunately, it can be the same with guitar players as well, as we can tend to play a lot of notes all over the neck, but we're not really saying much in terms of our playing. So that's what I wanted to show you. I'll play that track again one more time. And then what we're going to do there is we are going to look at... Um, doing it in different parts of the guitar neck just so you can see that same concept can apply in different areas and then we're going to change the track as well i'm going to show you how um to get the tabs if and by the way if you check out the description of this video there's a link where you can go ahead and tell us where to send the tabs and we'll go ahead and send that to you so um let's go ahead and jam that uh, track again i'm going to play different ideas but remember my constraint is i'm only allowed to use these three notes then these four, then these four, and then we can even do, that's five. So I will go from three notes to four notes, to four notes, to five notes. So I'm limiting my amount of notes and I'm playing the same notes over different chords. Let's see what can, can happen here. I, of course, and I'll just say this as a disclaimer, you'll never play all these ideas one after each other. It's going to be too much because it's, uh, you need to use them tastefully. It's like sh salt. If you put too much salt in a meal, you c it, it's, it's not nice, right? And if you put too little salt, it's also not nice. So you want to strike that balance, right? So let's go ahead and see what I can do with repetitive and syncopated ideas and also using articulation. I'm going to break all that down for you. Here we go. Intro, two, three, four... variety right
Four notes only. Variety. Four notes only. Variety. Variety. Now let's go to the up here. Gotta stop there, and I'm, the point I'm trying to make there is repetition. Like I said, if I just play those same ideas the whole time, it's not going to be nice uh, because it's going to be too much salt. You want to kind of dial that back in terms of like how you use the repetition, where you use it, and then how you can build things. And I'm going to give you some examples of how you might just play simpler ideas, but then use this kind of a, a rhythmic and melodic device to bring in some melodic and rhythmic interest. So before we go into another jam track, let's just answer a couple of more questions here. So Samson is asking, um, can you can Boss GTA tones work for modern worship songs? I think so. Um, obviously, if you look at, um, you just need to understand your signal chain. You want to start with compression, so you have a nice, tight, and focused sound. You want to have different um, drives so that your sound can cut through the mix. And then you want to add delay and reverb to kind of give it a bit of a spacious vibe. So, and the Boss GT8 can do all that. It has compressors, it has drives, it has um, delays and reverbs, and obviously other effects too. So if you dial it the right way, then um, you can totally do it. Uh, it can work for that. Of course, it's not going to be like, it doesn't have like the, um, some of the functionalities of other units, but the, the core is there. And if you use it in the right way, it can totally work for um, modern worship. I've not used one, and I'm not that familiar with the Boss um, gear, but um, you can definitely, I'm pretty sure you'd be able to, to do that. So we've got Oscar saying, um, He's from Mexico City. Good vibes. Awesome to see you, Oscar. Um, Samson is saying this is awesome. And then Nix is asking, do you record your own multitracks? Yes, we do. Um, we actually have at worshipguitarskills.com. If you go to, there's a link called the Course Store. And then um, we sell some of those tracks. And in fact, we have a, what we call a Worship Guitar Skills Practice Pack, where we've taken all the keys in different tempos and different progressions. So this progression that I've just played over now was a five, two, four, one progression. Five, two, four, one. Five, two, four, one. Five, two, four, one. So um, we have some of those multi-tracks, which is basically what I'm using here just to jam along to, to see um, how can you use the stuff in a musical way. So what I want to show you now is actually get deep into the actual notes of the things that I played. Um, so if you want to go ahead and grab the tabs, you're uh, welcome to do so. And um, when you go to that link that's in the description, you'll be able to um, get access to, to the tabs that I'm going to show you. So if I go over here to my guitar cam, and then what you can see in front of you right here, this is the PDF that you'll be able to get when you sign up um, to get the tabs for those examples that I played in the beginning. Now, this might look like Greek to some of you, um, because like, what, what are we looking at over here, right? And even if I go to my full iPad, just to show you, this is this whole example that I've just played. Well, one of them, right? So um, it starts with, let me just remind you, it starts like this. Um, 
So all that tells me, and I'll go back to this camera, is over here, you can see that there's a number four. And then there's a number five that goes to a number four with a pull-off. So then that means if it says four over here, for those of you who don't know tab, I must play that fourth fret. And then it says five, pull off to four. That's five that goes to four. And then I play four again on the G string. So these are my first group of four notes. Then I have a second group um, of four notes. And then I have my, my last, actually, that's a... Uh, there we go, like this and like that. So you can actually see how all these notes go out. So that shows you physically where to put your fingers, number one. So that's easy to understand. These are like where you're going to put your fingers on the guitar. So fourth, four, five, four, 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 five. That's basically what I'm playing there. And if I take off my reverb and delay, one of them snuck in there. Um... Okay, I need to push it twice, so there we go. That's what that line says over there for me. So if I play it, not only does this tell me what notes to play, you know, like we've just shown you, these things over here shows me what rhythm I need to play this in. All right? So um, that's why it's important to learn to read rhythms, which is one of the things that we do in our rhythm workshop. So if I just clap this rhythm... And I can maybe, let's do that, we can we can um, take this out after a second. But if I just use a red pencil, and I'm going to go ahead and just show you where my beats are over here. This is going to be beat one, right there. Let's make that a bit bigger. Um, so you can go ahead and see that. So beat one, and I'm writing nice and big here um, so you can see, but that's beat one. This is beat two, that's beat three, and that's beat four. So now I can clearly see where does my beats land. So if I just play what's written on beats 1, 2, 3, and 4, 1E and 2E, uh, and, uh, and then on 3 there's nothing, and on 4 there's a 4 again. What do I mean by there's nothing on, on beat 2? Well, if you look at this, there's I'm tying 1, 4 to another 4, and then on beat 3... I'm also tying that four to that four. That means I'm not playing on these beats. So in short, those beats that you're used to hearing, there's nothing being played on them. So what, what does that mean? Well, it means I'm playing around the beat. So now instead of actually doing that, um, let's go ahead and write out the rhythm as it's actually happening here. So I'm now going to get rid of beat two and four, because, oh, sorry, two and three, because I'm not using it. And then instead, I'm just going to go back. So yeah, let's go to red. So one knee and a, uh, two e and a, uh, three e and a, uh, four and. So that just means if I were to count all 16 notes, one e and a, uh, two e and a, uh, three e and a, uh, four e and a, uh, if I played all 16. But in this case, I'm not. I'm playing... 1E e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E and a 1E e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E and. So that's a cool rhythm. And if I just go ahead and take that same track and not actually play any other notes, I'm literally just going to play that rhythm, which is... 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and. And I'll play that over that same backing. And let's get my reverbs and delays back in business here. Same track, but just one note with that rhythm. Intro, two, three, four.
So can you see, obviously, that was just to demonstrate. But if I have a solid rhythm, even just playing one note is going to sound cool. Let's take that to a totally different track. That is not what we've just heard, but I'm just going to play this. One E and a two E and a three E and a four we and one E and a two E and a three E and a four we and. It's a cool rhythm, right? It's it's syncopated. The rhythm actually sounds cool. Um, I mean, we all know this one. Um, what is that? Uh, it's a it's a famous rhythm that we all know. Let me play that same rhythm in red now over here. I'm just gonna tap a different level. I'm in a different tempo. One, two, three, four. Let's move up a bit. Alright, so let me know if that makes sense. I've taken either just one note or multiple notes, but no more than three. And then I gave those notes almost like a superpower by using a solid rhythm. And in that case, it's a very syncopated rhythm. And um, that then gives me something that, that sounds cool within that beat so that right there is one example of how when you have a good rhythm um, it just changes everything and that rhythm by the way if I go back to it over here then um, it's a uh, I can take any progression even if I do a, a four one five six and if I just play the root notes four one five six without delay without delay it's going to be One E and a two E and a three E and a four we and one E and a two E and a three E and a four we and one E and a two E and a three E and a four we and one E and a two E and a three E and a four we and if I put my delay and my river back and I play it like this. And you can take that same rhythm and play it over any progression. If we just change that now to 1, 4, 6, 5 and E. 1, 4, 6, 5 in E. Listen to this. Intro, 2, 3, 4. I'll start that again. I just wanted to tap in my tempo. Intro, 2, 3, 4. Thank you. 
So I started that by playing just one note. Which is this rhythm that I played over here, um, that I've shown you earlier. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. So that's why it's important that you learn how to read rhythms because then you can quickly pick up a rhythm like this without um, having to know um, any theory really. Of course, you need to understand your note values and learn how to read that. But that way, you can put the right rhythms to your notes. And if you look at most worship guitar charts, um, it's the lyrics with chords above it. And the, they, they don't give you the rhythms to play. And that's why some of the, the, the parts don't sound that great because, yes, it might be the right notes, but with the wrong rhythm, um, they're not quite going to work. So let's go over to the next one. The, the second line That's what I wanted to show you over here. See if I make that a little bit smaller. I don't know if that can. Yes, yeah, so then you can see how that fits in there. So our second line here that I played sounded like this. Um, so I just had a slight different ending there. But can you see I just have one, one two, three, four notes. One, two, three, four. And if I keep repeating that... I can use some hybrid picking even if I wanted to. Um, let's see if I can bring the guitar up for you to see that. So I'm going between my, my pick and my middle finger. Listen to what that sounds like in the track, and then afterwards we'll come and uh, break it down. Intro, two, three, four. With the drums. So that, that repetition there where basically it's just these four notes um, that I'm playing over and over. There, there it is, there they are again, and then a slight different variation. So I deliver on a promise of saying, listen, we're only going to use four notes, and then what can we do? Well, now let's write out the timing for this one. This is going to be a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So as we can see, it's almost all the 16th notes except for B2. So B2, okay, let's not do that, but um, I'm going to do it in, 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 in like a yellow color. So then we know that B2, I don't play it. Well, you can't see that, can you? So that's not going to work. Um, let's leave it blue. What, whatever's in blue, we are not playing it. There's B2, and then it's the end of beat um, 3. So again, just these two notes... I'm not playing that. Otherwise, I'm playing all 16 notes. So what does that mean? Well, um, a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a. So that's a, it's a fairly tricky rhythm if you have to count and clap it like that. But if I just play it on one note, it's going to sound like this. A uh, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So there we go. When you can see that, then you can start using that in other um, places as well. So that's a, a, a fairly straightforward one. Uh, but here's the one that everyone always asks about on the channel, which is this one. Um, so what, what's going on here? Let's look at the notes first. 
Um, it's literally just these four notes. Um, it's nine, nine, eleven, and nine. It's just those four notes that I'm repeating. Um, so if you go and look at the rhythm, it's important to write that one down. It's um, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. So this one is much more syncopated, which is basically one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. So if I do that one as a um, single note only without all the other notes, it sounds Intro, like this. Two, three, four. And a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a. there's a bit of an ending at the end there that I played. But can you see the change that happens here when you can actually count the rhythm? So, of course, all of those parts is not something that you would um, play right out of the gate, right after each other. Like I said before, you'd want to experiment with those a little bit and first play some kind of a melody. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to demonstrate this for you. And let's go to the full uh, guitar cam. I'm going to play over this track. I'm going to play some melodic stuff, nice and chill in the beginning. And then after that drum fill, when we want the guitar to kind of bring some more vibe, then I am going to go ahead and um, put in that line that I've just played for you. Uh, so we've got Darren. Hey, Darren, he says he's late, but he made it. Let's go. Great to see you, Darren. Um, uh, there is one of our repeat viewers here, so always, always good to see the familiar faces. I'm going to go ahead and play this track nice and chill, and then when the time is right, I'm going to go ahead and um, take things up a notch. Intro, two, three, four... a little bit I'm going to bring in that other lift. So that's just an example of how you can start with something nice and open and then when the time is right, you dive into the, that repetitive thing or this, or this. Or we even add this. So you can see how those repetitive ideas 
um, end up actually making a bit of a difference in your playing as it relates to what you're able to do with regards to um, coming up with some cool parts. So I know it's a little bit more of an advanced thing here because um, technically I'm not playing... I'm not playing all the notes to ring out at the same time. I'm using... Without delay and reverb. So it's a quick and then pick and release. And this is all downstrokes. So there's a bit of technique involved in getting in between the different strings. And then obviously the right kind of tone involved there as well. And um, yeah. So hopefully that kind of gives you a sense that when you look at these tabs, and I'll show it to you one more time, like that over there. Um, and by the way, if you want to sign up to this, um, you are able to go ahead. Just check out the link in the description, and then you can go ahead and, and, and sign up for the tabs. There's some additional description. And by the way, this was from the video that we just published earlier in the week. So you can get access to that with all of these tabs. Um, written out there for you and then we are also going to include the track that I am playing over so this way you can see exactly what the notes are what the rhythms are even if you can't read rhythm at least your eyes will start to see what it looks like when these ideas are written down on paper and by the way that was one of the ways that I learned to um, become a better guitar player is um, I learned to transcribe music to actually write out the different rhythms and all of that kind of stuff so I definitely want to encourage you to, to go ahead and try that out. All right. So um, awesome, awesome to see everybody again today. I'll, I'll do a little bit of a jam in a song that is, um, let's just see, it's called Praises Be Lifted Up. Um, so I have to disconnect the iPad here real quick. And then um, this song is in the key of B. It's quite an old song uh, by Bethel. Uh, but that's some really nice guitar parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just jam along to it. And I'm just going to get my um, phone to go ahead and, and trigger the tracks for me over here. And then um, if you have any questions around what I'm playing, what we covered today, or anything else, uh, be sure to pop them in the comments section. Because that way I'll be able to go ahead and, and read through those and answer those before um, we wrap for the day. Now what I like about this song... Well, first of all, um, if you have a Kemper, then I highly recommend checking out ToneJunkieStore.com. HW and Suze, they make some really awesome patches. And this is the patch that I bought from them uh, with the, uh, they've got a, um, they sell different patches. And this one was actually for a song called Praises Be Lifted Up, which is the jam that I'm going to be doing for, for you now. Um, I just need to find it on my phone here in order to, to um, trigger it. But basically, it uses the, it plays the chords that um, we have in, written down on the chart, but it's got some interesting extensions. I'm going to show you what those are. And then if you are looking for the tone that I'm always using, um, go ahead and check that out with... Um, well, um, like I said, Tone Junkie Store, it's praises be lifted up. Um, and that's the tone that I'm using. It's a matchless um, a Spitfire kind of model that they use there for, for the main amp. And then all the delays and everything is programmed in there as well. Now, um, we have a lot of people that um, also are using um, Helix, um, Line 6 Helix. So uh, we also have some tones that we programmed for that specifically from our own side but um and we're going to try and recreate this particular sound on the helix um because then for those helix users and hopefully soon pod goes well um i can give you guys the kind of sounds that i use myself um and what that we use for playing on sundays uh, between myself and kenan and kenan is obviously using an hx stomp for the majority of his sounds so i just want to make sure that we are, are good to go here and i'm just going to put this on do not disturb and uh, we just have to do a slightly different sound check on this one. So, Kenan, if you don't mind, just let me know what the level of the track is here. 
and then I want to jam along to this and I'll break down the parts as well and I sing praises to your name. let's put the guitar in there real quick Right, so we're gonna we're gonna break some of that down in a second to see we know what the, the the track is working like over there but what i like about this um this song obviously it's got that really nice intro That's a really nice part, but then in addition to that, they have another guitar that's just doing... Which is a lot of that's, um, in that case, it's just probably its 16th notes, but with some of the um, accents, which um, then follow a similar approach and what I'm using there for the, um, the, the stuff that we covered today in terms of those syncopated parts. But then when they go to the chorus, the chords are basically E and B. But then they play this, they play... So that, um, that's one of those songs where I um, you know, obviously play the same line when we do this at church, uh, but then I also improvise and do some of my own things along with that. So I'm going to go ahead and just jam along to this song. If you have any questions around anything um, sp specifically around the song or around any of the techniques, let me know. I haven't played this in a while, so I'll also kind of veer off script a little bit and just do uh, a few um, different variations of the... Um, of the parts and then i'm um, happy to answer a few questions as we wrap up another live stream so here we go praises be lifted up by bethel in the key of b uh, let's check it out Four two voicings.
übrigens von der Syncopation in. of the previous ideas, maybe. One of the other ideas. in a big chorus. Etc. So that was um, probably more. Uh, let me just stop. Something is playing here that shouldn't play. All right. Sorry about that. So that was probably more um, things that you would do that, uh, like you would play on a Sunday. But um, I'm just showing you guys how I could use some of those techniques that I've shown you, whether it's the syncopated stuff, whether it's power chords, whether it's four twos, whether it's melodies that's focused around chord tones along with passing tones, all the stuff that we do on the channel, um, just to kind of show you how that can be used in a worship setting. So hopefully that was useful and that you got a couple of ideas out of this just to kind of see how we can use the same notes, but let your personality shine through in terms of how you're going to play it. And that's going to be a combination of the rhythms that you use. Even as I'm speaking, I've got a certain way of talking and phrasing and where I put accents and where I put pauses. In terms of that's just the way I speak, right? Of course, I've got my accent, so that might be my tone and my voice has got a sound to it and whatever the case may be. But I sound like Charles. And when Kenan speaks, he's like Kenan. And when someone else speaks... Um, they're going to sound like they sound. And I want you to sound like you sound when you worship God. You don't want to sound like I sound. You don't want to sound like um, the guitarists from Bethel or from Elevation or whatever the case may be. They do great stuff and we love it and we can learn from it. But at the end of the day, when you want to express your love and adoration for the King, you want to do it in your voice. And that's really why we believe that it's important for you to work on your skills to develop your style and to unleash your sound. So important for you to do that. And of course, we have to use uh, what we call shared language as it relates to um, learning these different things, triads, chord tones, non-chord tones, different rhythms, articulation, phrasing, all that kind of stuff. That's all the same, but that's the alphabet. We all have the same alphabet, but the words we use, how we put those together into sentences and paragraphs and how we communicate is different for all of us. So that's really my prayer for you today is that you will find um, use in these teachings that we have on the channel as it relates to worship guitar skills and that you will use that to find your own sound and to release your own sound in worship and um, really perform that function that we have. Um, first of all, the Bible tells us to sing unto the Lord a new song and it also says that we need to come together with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, and that we have the opportunity and the privilege to lead others into worship as well. So that's really why we exist here as a channel, um, to go and help you guys to develop those skills. In the description, there's a link 
uh, that you can go and click on um, and sign up for those tabs. You'll get the exact tabs of those parts that I played. And we'll also be able to send you notifications of whenever we are going to go live on the channel and whenever uh, we do different things. So looks like we have no further comments there. We've just gone on the top of the hour over here. So uh, much love to everybody. Hope that you are going to have an awesome rest of your week and, and hopefully soon um, we'll be hitting the weekend that you've got a great weekend there with your friends, family and loved ones. And um, if there's anything that we can do to help you guys improve your worship guitar skills and your playing, uh, you know where to find us. You leave a comment under any video. Um, and like you guys have done today, uh, putting those comments in the chat over here. So with that, thanks so much for tuning in for yet another live stream of that worship guitar show. Peace and love be to you and we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy, guys. Bye-bye.